What's up, everybody? Big Herc, fresh out. You're tuned into another interview with our channel. Thank you for supporting. Thank you for subscribing. I'm here in downtown LA chilling with my man Milk. He's got a story to tell. So uh, we hooked up to make it happen. So I'm gonna let him kind of give a little background information as far as where he's from, what he's about, and um, you know what led to his little situation. So tell the people a little bit about where you're from, man. Um, well, I'm from South LA, Figueroa Street, you know. Um, that's the Hoovers, you know. Um, so, I mean, you know, what was it like growing up out there? It I was mean, horrible. I mean, I got adopted when I was seven days old to a black family. Okay. Okay. Seven days old. We lived kind of, at first we lived like in a good part of LA. Okay. Then I remember her saying, uh, it's either buy stuff, like gifts, all that type of shit, clothes and shit, or pay this high rent. So we moved to 53rd and Dinker. And that's when I just like jumped off the porch and shit. And so growing up, um, being a, a white kid in a black family and around, you know, just a black a community, how was that, man? Because a lot of people, you know, they ask us about like, well, man, I'm, you know, I'm half Mexican and I'm black or I'm half white and I'm black. I mean, you know, uh, what was it like, man, as far as like growing up in that type of environment? I mean, um, it was hard. I mean, it wasn't, I, it was hard, but it wasn't hard. It was, I made it hard mm -hmm. because I wanted to get in the streets and shit. And um, that's when it became difficult. But it was difficult before that because, you know, I got uh, some, I was, I guess, extra out. So then I got other people that's mad at me because I'm more extra out than them. Okay. Conflicts, beefs, you know, where I come from over there in the set, uh, I don't have no family from over there. So I don't have no uncles, cousins, or none of that. My grandmother just had a house over there that she bought in 69. Okay. So um, over there, it was just a lot of bullshit. I've been through all, everything. So did you get caught up in a lot of the uh, the gang stuff out yeah, there? And stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm a gang member. Okay. I'm not actively like a gang banger right now. Yeah. I'm a gang member, though. It's almost inevitable just being in that environment trying to deal with the situation. Uh, There's no way to get around it. Yeah. There's, there's no way. There's no way possible. You could be standing right there and they're going to come slide. and yeah. It's kind of put you in the mix. Yeah, because now you you already acting like you in the thugging. So mm -hmm. when they do come and then these people say, now it's time to go. What was your first time you had a, like you're running with the law? What, what, was, what happened with that? Well, I was 14 and um, they came and ran up on us and said a purse got snatched. And um, I fed the description. Uh, I went to jail, and then after that, it was just a. It was just. It was over. In and out. In and out. Every every other minute. So you went to. Uh, you was in juvenile hall. I've been. And uh, I've been to all like, like juvenile hall, LP Central, Silmar. I did camp. I did a camp program in Laverne at okay. Camp Page. It's like a fire camp. Yeah, Laverne, yeah. Next to Alpha Ball and down the street from Rocky. You know, all that shit, and it's hard being in there, a, a white male running with a black gang. Exactly. So yeah. it's like a lot of pressure. It's like a, it's just everybody wants you. Everybody's trying to see what you're about, yeah. if you're really about it. And yeah, but that wasn't, the, 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 the juvenile part was fun, kind of, like the jail part was fun, mm -hmm. because you really didn't have so much of the, the racist shit, like in California oh, yeah, yeah, prisons, yeah. Yeah. in the county jail, <clears throat> and... All that. It totally different. different. Yeah, totally, totally different ball game. As soon as you get in there, they expect you to go over here. And yeah, like this. yeah. Yeah, but when I got to the county, it didn't go like that. Yeah. Yeah. I went to, I got to the county. I went to the county the first time. It was for some bullshit. Uh, a theft or some shit. Some shit came up missing or some shit. It was some, I forgot what it was. It was a long time ago. But that was the first time I went for a week. I never really, I just went through processing and got out. The next time I went for a gun, uh -huh. so I had to sit down for a minute because I'm on probation with the gun. So when I first, when you go down here, they segregate you after the processing. Oh, okay. Blacks, they say the blacks, they say Mexicans, and they say the whites. So when they say that, I didn't go with the whites or the Mexicans. I went with the blacks. So now they looking kind of like distraught. Like, like, this doesn't make sense. Are you okay? What the fuck is going <laughs> on? Yeah. Because I'm going in there with 50 blacks. And I'm the only white. And they're like, oh, he probably gangbang or something. So they kind of scared. They're like, oh, do you know what you're doing? I'm like, yeah, let me in there. <laughs> now I got to go in there and get, I got to deal with all this. And then I'm from Hoover. And um, 
we don't get along with nobody. Yeah. Like everybody, we don't get along with. So now I got to fight all these people in jail. Oh shit. Yeah. So you're dealing with all these different hoods tr set tripping because you from Hoover and you got to stand up and be like, like yeah. you can't be like, oh, I ain't, I ain't in this shit. Yeah, nah. And then you got like certain black males who's, who, who are mad because I'm doing this. Like you got some people that, that don't like it. Not that they don't like it, but they probably, I'm more, I was more, extra out than these people so yeah. it's, it was different then on top of that i gotta worry about the 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 whites in there they're not that they're not that deep in there but you got ones that is, they're deep enough because the second time i went in there i was on uh it was for the gun case and um i went in there they put me on uh i went the wayside got into a fight with like three people three yeah. three enemies and Wayside, you know, it's like dorm living. So mm -hmm. you go in there and there's people coming in and out every day. Yeah. You might have to fight every day. Yeah, because somebody coming in and it's its own. Yeah. So I fought I fought three people there. I fought three people at Main Street, a five five neighborhood, and like some dude that was supposed to be my homie, but he wasn't. Because he mm. wasn't in there doing no fighting. Yeah. And I was a super max, 714. <laughs> I'm the only white, oh, shit. white guy in there. Do you have any partners that was up in there from the street that uh, had your back? Yeah, I seen them. I seen a couple of people. It was like a reunion when we got from, when they, when they, after that shit happened, the dude that the fight happened with, he told on everybody. So they came in there like on the last count and he jumped up and said, you know, my face fucked up and all this shit. So they took us to the hole and I, short story, I got sent back to Main Central Jail. So they took me on 22,000 for 21, 2300. Mm. When they took me there, I had homies like on the other side, but I'm I'm not about to, I, I'm not about to, no, I don't need my homies. Like, not like that, but I'm saying I don't, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do without them. I'm still going to outside. I'm still going to wherever I gotta go. Mm -hmm. So these is single man sales, and on the bottom is four man sales. So it was time for us to go to the roof. None of my homies was around, so I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna go. When I went to the roof, uh, we was on the 3,000th floor. You know, it's like you're on the roof with the gate and shit. Mm -hmm. You got the whites, the blacks, the Mexicans and shit like that. So I'm still, I got a couple of blacks that I'm over here with. A couple of dudes from Long Beach that stayed down. Uh, it was from everywhere, but I seen it. Like, I, they over here playing basketball. I'm standing right here. So I go get some water because I refuse to just stand over here like I'm a bitch and... Like, I need mm -hmm. these people to help me. So I go get some water, I come back. The second time when I go get some water, I seen it's like six white dudes, tattoos and shit. They mad because I had an altercation with one of them. Because when I came, when I came to 21, 22, a white dude with tattoos walked up and said, you know, I run this. I guess like he the, supposed to be a shot caller. I'm like, dude, you don't run me because I'm not, uh, I don't run with you. Yeah. yeah. So he got mad. I guess they called whoever they had to call, and they tried to rush me on the roof. The worst mistake they did. They mm. got fucked over. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That was my first riot I was in like, yeah. on a serious level. Oh, they thought they were going to put in work on you. Yeah. And then, all, like, seven people that were over there that I was with, a dude from Grape, I think it was a dude from Linden Block, that's in Long Beach. And it was like two other people went up, and he was telling me, nah, don't get down, don't get down, fuck that, keep going, keep going. This is what the dude from Grape telling me. So I'm like, I'm still smashing. Picking up trash cans, yeah. all type of shit. The police like get down, you know, we ain't getting down. And um, it still was retaliation after that because I had three homies that once I went to the shoe, uh, you know, in the, the the day room on Sundays they do church, so they put everybody in the day room and they lock the door. My mm. homies then was already the porters and shit. That's like the people that pass out the lunch mm -hmm. and shit. So you know they they fucked them over basically mm. and caught cases because of it. It's fucked up. Oh wow! Like harass, uh, not harassment. I mean, uh, a hate crime. Mm. Yeah, for after, because of for what for what happened on the roof. Yeah, because they like kind of beat them with milk crates. Oh shit! Yeah, man. So it's a lot of drama up in the county, man. Is that um what what was the actual incident that led to you um doing your your the most time you had to do? I mean, what what did you did you do? Did you have to go to the pen, or did what was the incident that led to you having to release? Well, well no, I didn't go to the pen. Because I, I was I was lucky, but uh, I kind of think that the county jail is worse than the pen. Mm -hmm. If people really think about it, because the pen is more like it's more everybody's here. You got your friction. Like if I if I went to prison now, it would be a problem. I already been in school. Like I got people that got numbers. I got like people that's doing a, a lot of time. My brother just did twenty five. He got out. 
I went right back for some dumb ass shit. You know, mm. 35 to life. So, I mean, I'm not worried about it, but if I do go to prison, it's going to be a problem. Mm. If I hit a level four or three prison yard, it's going to be a fucking problem. So, but in your mind, are you, did you learn from your experience to where you feel like you're not in a, in a, in a kind of mindset where you're going to go back to prison? Or do you feel right now that you're doing positive things that's going to keep you out of prison? No, I'm, I'm, I'm all the way positive. I work two jobs right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I'm not trying to go back to jail, but yeah, I, nah, I don't want to go back to jail. So what did you take away from that experience, Pat? I mean, when you got out, what was the turning point where you said, you know what, I'm, I'm done with the bullshit, well, with the guns and all that? Well, because I, I got back out, I was still on the same shit, still gangbanging, still the only white dude on fig. You got to think, in South Central, the population of white people is probably, <laughs> it's none. Mm -hmm. You probably only see like, Two other white people in there, they're smokers, like crackheads. Oh, or shit. some shit like this. Yeah. I'm the only one over there, orange, black, orange and black, you know. Mm -hmm. So we were standing in front of the store one day. We were standing in front of the store every day on 79th. Like I used to hustle there, do everything. J and E liquor on 79th and Fig. And one day it was me and my homeboy, the day after his birthday. Normal and shit, I, I just put the thing up. We just went and put the gun up because for some reason in LA, it's like weird when it's about to be a shooting, the police, they they they're hot like it's like they know what's gonna be yeah, going yeah it's like they coming to make sure you don't got guns so you can get shot and um so they did that bullshit and um two minutes later a car pulled by we like that's hardman because we thinking it's like a detective that we know like a homicide detective but the car parked and two dudes jump out they jump out they walk like two feet and i'm telling them like hey what the fuck is it going on? like what's up like who is these people? Mm -hmm. You know, they two big black guys, like, with hoodies on, and like, mm. like, uh, they just looked at horrible. So I'm like, they don't Didn't fit. Didn't fit, huh? Nah, hell no, nah, they don't fit. And I'm, I'm like, damn, the gun is far. Like, we got it all over here. What are we gonna do? And, um, shit, it was too late. Like, they just start opening fire. Oh, they got off yeah, on you? Yeah, hell yeah. One stood, like, right here. One stood right here. We was right here. I broke this way. They broke this way. One went, one went like this, one went like this. And uh, they shot like 60 times. And my homie got hit one time in the back and died. Because he didn't Damn. move. Damn. he didn't move fast enough. So what they had, like, they must have had automatics or something. Yeah, they, they had, they had extendos on them things. Damn. Yeah, they was coming over. Just got off with a dark or a daytime? No, it was daytime. It was three in the evening, four in the evening. Damn. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I just was like kind of fucked up because I'm like, damn, I'm... The gun just got put up. Like, why did the gun get put oh, up? Oh, man. So just five minutes before, you would have had a strap. You could, you know, you got... I mean, we probably... Obviously, I probably couldn't have, like, outshot them. Mm -hmm. But I could have, you know, I could have backed them up. Or I could have, like, probably, like, That's saved crazy. the situation. Then I had grown-ass people mad at me because he got... He died. I mean, what do you want me to do? Yeah. We out you here. And all, everybody's in the same situation. We out here all game banging. He's... Why am I to blame for him dying? Wow. Well, you know how it goes. I didn't say nothing. So that was kind of like the wake-up call, huh? Yeah, because that was the last time. I mean, I got shot at a lot. Like, I had homies, like, shot in front of me. Like, when I come from over there, like, two months before that, my homie just got executed in a car, him and his baby mama that was pregnant on Damn. Manchester and Fig. They just caught him in the car and murked him? Shot the car up. But the dude who shot the car up got shot at the same time and died. So it was kind of like fucked wow. Up. So he got it too. Get trying to give it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's horrible over there. It's like horrible. So what? What do you as far as have going now? That's like you know taking you in a more positive direction, man. That's you know taking you uh, away from that. Really, my girl, and just it, it's my girl, kind of not really, but she she let me know like i need to do something else and this shit not gonna work and i already was thinking that i'm like i have to try to do something else or i'm gonna die because the dude just got killed my homie he just got out of prison and was working doing good like he had got out of prison was working soon as he started as soon as he left the job said fuck that shit went back on fig trying to pimp and be cj the mac that's when he got murdered just like that yeah and the the, the day i was supposed to go to his funeral the day of his no, the day before the funeral, the viewing, we standing on 74th and Figueroa. It's like four days after the shooting, and um, this the day of the uh, viewing of the body. 
Somebody else walk up, like it, like they got a, a hit out on us or something. Somebody else walk up on the yard with kids and all that and open fire. Just and, like that, while everybody's viewing the body. Yes, the dude uncle got the dude uncle got um, killed right there, Buddha. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. But you know that just that comes with the South Central life. Like I'm from South Central, I've been out there all my life. So what would you tell? Uh you know, so many youngsters out here, man, you know, who think this shit is cool, who look up to like a lot of these rappers and shit who glamorize this lifestyle because, you know, we got a lot of people which it's already been oversaturated on the internet, but like with Takashi, man, he was talking high power. And then the shit goes down, now you wanna tell because he's talking about he's got a family and Fuck it, that it don't work. That's what I'm saying, it don't work, work like, like that. that. If I got I done been in that situation a hundred times. When you when you in this life you get called, you cannot tell. I got homies right now that's 19 that, that didn't say shit and doing 25, doing 100 years that not going to say nothing. Takashi is, all that shit is fake. All these rappers are fake. None of these people really is out here doing none of this shit. I advise nobody, I advise everybody to just live a regular life. To not, because once you go in these streets, it's, it's, it's fucked up, horrible. It's it's no loyalty no more. Mm -hmm. Everything is not is it's not like it was when my when my big homies was coming up. None of that shit is the same. You got people over here mad because you a shooter. Now they telling on you. Yeah, on some shit that's unrelated. Yeah, or they or yeah. they about to or they about to shoot you up and say they did it. Like they gonna say the people down the street did it. It's fucked up. Bro. Basically, everybody's throwing everybody under the bus. Yes. Snitching is okay. Nobody doing nothing to these snitches. Uh, it's just no loyalty. You go to jail, nobody doing nothing. It's, it's, all of it is fucked up. So if you want to live a good, a good, normal life, then you need to just work until you can do something else. That's what I'm doing. And when you look back from where you came from to where you're at now, I mean, you know, we're chilling doing this interview, man. We're, we're out here in L.A., you know, 18th floor, man. I mean, you know, how, how do you... Um, how you describe that vision, man, taking yourself from, you know, the block to, you know, moving over here. What, what got you to this point? Just really me. I, I mean, I, I wouldn't give up. I mean, my mama died when I was 14. So ever since then, I've been in the streets. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I was in the streets, because my mother died. My grandmother had a property on 79th and Figueroa, uh, 608 West 79th Street. And that was like the spot where everybody was at. So... I just came from all that. Like, I'm not from the valley. I'm not from Rancho Cucamonga. <laughs> I'm not from yeah. none of that shit. I'm from 79th and Figueroa. And I just, I don't know. I just woke up one day like, I, I have to do something else. I have to, I, I can't keep fucking the world up. I got to do something better or I'm going to die. Like, Did you, do you think that not having a, a male role model played a big factor? Yeah, Somebody was probably yeah, mentor? yeah. I mean, I didn't have no family, really. And my mother, she died when I was 14. I was my adopted mother. She did everything, but I didn't have no father. I didn't have no fucking uncles. I grew up in, when I, until I was 14, I grew up in a house with all women. Mm. Sister, three, four sisters, the nieces, everybody. So it was like, you know, it was, yeah. Well, if you could uh, have any, anything like you would like to leave with our fans as far as uh, any advice or anything you would like to share with them, what would that be? The advice would be to, to leave the streets alone and, um, I mean, go to work, go to school, do do something else because it's not worth it. And then they're going to go get caught up for nothing. It's inevitable. I mean, you're playing that game in the streets and you hoorah it's going to catch up to and, you. And the county jail is not no joke. I, yeah. I, I was in the county jail with a dude that I know from the streets and he, he did not make it out. He died in the county jail. Like, that's, it, it's scary going there. You're going yeah. there in a six-man cell. Imagine me, I'm white going in there with a six... Six people, I don't know. All of them can be my enemies. They mm -hmm. killed me right there. Dude was in the cell next to me and got stumped to death mm. by supposedly his homie. Yeah. So over nothing, over some shit that wasn't even serious. Wow. So there's no guarantees, man. People think you're going to just come around and come in there and go home. Ain't no guarantees. Yeah, they're doing it for a lot of days. They're doing it just for cloud and bitches. It's not, that's what I, I didn't do it for that. Yeah. Yeah, like, it's just, they're doing it for all the wrong shit. Like Takashi, look, he was not from the streets, get bumped up and then tell because he's facing this time. Like, it was crazy. Like you said, even his shooter, he told on the shooter. Yeah, how do you tell You know what I mean? Shooter? You sent him. Yeah, how do you do that? Like, it's, 
It's fucked up. I got nervous. That's why I don't. It's why you can't fuck with people. Yeah. No, I, I understand. You know, I, I understand because I've been caught up in shit. And I've heard a dude say, said, man, I got kids out there. I'm like, damn. What man, does you, that mean? You wasn't talking about that when we was doing yeah, what we was doing. Yeah. The kids wouldn't. You wouldn't saying, hey, the kids, let's stop. You know what I mean? Or let's pull over. Yeah, but uh, but these days and time, the, 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 these drugs they got making people tell. Because I had a homie that was a, you know, he's a cold person, like a cold killer. Like, you know, when they say you got a person that end beef, yeah. like stop the beef. He was one of them dudes. Got caught up and told because he thought somebody was fucking his bitch and told him everybody. This and all kind people of got a hundred. What is it? Two thousand nineteen. They get out like in twenty one nineteen or something like that. Damn. Yeah. It's the, I think it's the drugs. Like everybody was on crack and crystal meth and. Yeah, I think it's just a different era, man. It's not. Um, you know, I tell people all the time, I said, man, go get you a trade, go yeah. to school, you know, learn to be an auto mechanic or, you know, construction or, you know, anything, man. Be a barber, uh, man, start your business. What, I don't care what they do. They just need to go work and mm -hmm. do that first because they need to just work and then go do something else. That's better than going to sell dope, got to watch. You can't even sell dope no more like that. No, no. Everybody's no got more. a camera. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like back in the day, you'd be at the park and it'd be, you know, wouldn't nobody be filming you. Now, no. I'm going to put the phone it's up. Okay to, yeah. It's okay to do this shit. Yeah. Like when I was growing up, that's why I don't have a lot of pictures when I was younger because we, the video take pictures. recording yeah. wasn't, no. that wasn't cool, you know, like, but everything changed. I'm glad shit is changing for mm -hmm. the better with these people because we, everybody was going in a fucked up route. Like I got, I still got a couple of homies over there that's on, on the bullshit, mm -hmm. but that's on them. Yeah. Well, man, it's good to see that you've uh, you've grown, man, and you've come out. You know, you come out of that uh, mind state because uh, you know it's a dead end, man. You know what I mean? It's not like you're at the end of the tunnel, man. It, you know, like you said, people who run this shit, and it ain't it ain't cut out at the end of the day to be uh, anything to glamorize. No, it's not nothing to glamorize. It's not that you're either going to really seriously die, get told on, get killed by your friend. You're not even gonna get killed by no enemy. You're gonna yeah. get killed by your friend. Somebody that knows you. Yeah, somebody that knows you and know your mama. They're gonna tell on you, no loyalty, no money. No, and, and, and it's fucked up because where I come from, people don't even wanna get money. They just want you to, they want you to mooch off your money. Yeah. yeah. If you're, you're, you're the breadwinner, hey, go ahead and break bread. Yeah. Like, milk, hook yeah. me up. Yeah, okay. Oh, you got it, homie? Yeah. You, can't, you can't share? Yeah. But that, <laughs> that never was the case with me. Like, I never was. Cause they know, like, I, I mean, you know, I was over there all my life. Like, I, the same shit they doing, I can do. Mm -hmm. like, they know so, like. Well, well, there you have it, you guys. That's uh, the homeboy Milk from South Central, you know, giving up the real and um, showing you that, you know, the life ain't what it all cut out to be. So hopefully you guys get a good message from what he talked about. And uh, we would love to hear your comments. Make sure you subscribe. Big Hurt, Fresh Out, Life After the Penitentiary. Boom. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.